In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, in order to worthily celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sins. You raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of the fathers, sent his messengers to them. For he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. 
In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me. He has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept. When we remembered Zion On the aspens of that land We hung up our harps Let my tongue be silenced If I ever forget you for there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I Could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget. May my tongue cleave to my palate If I remember you not If I place not Jerusalem Ahead of my joy Let my tongue be silenced If I ever A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. And by grace, you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works 
that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Good evening. Letare Jerusalem, or rejoice, O Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. These words actually begin the Mass this day, which is why we call the fourth Sunday in Lent Letare Sunday, and why we wear rose-colored vestments instead of purple. Just like the third Sunday of Advent, we take this week, or the midpoint in Lent, to rejoice in all the wonderful blessings that God continually imparts upon us and his church. During this season in the Lenten desert, the church takes time to celebrate with joy. So again, rejoice in the Lord. This fourth Sunday of Lent is always about rejoicing. We rejoice because the Lord continues to call us his people and to draw us to himself. We rejoice because we know that Jesus came in the flesh for us, died for us, and is raised from the dead for us. The readings today bear this out. They show our unfortunate history. In our first reading from Chronicles, we keep falling down, and God, in his infinite mercy, continues to reach out. 
even after the people added infidelity to infidelity, early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people. This is again reflected in our second reading as well. God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. In our gospel reading, we hear some of the most famous words quoted from all of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Today, we only hear a part of the interchange between Nicodemus and Jesus. The lectionary actually divides Jesus' speech. It actually begins at chapter 3, verse 11, and extends to 321. Today, we begin at, actually, at verse 14. The passage begins with the play on the word, lift up. It describes God's command to Moses to lift up the serpent in the wilderness and the lifting up that is in store for Jesus. The passage makes little sense without the background story from Numbers 21, verse 4 through 9. In that narrative, the people became impatient on their way. Still in the wilderness, after their departure from Egypt and despairing of being able to survive in a land with no food and water, they complained against God and Moses. Consequently, terrible serpents appeared, bit the people, and killed them. When they repented, the Lord told Moses to make a serpent and set it on a pole so that anyone who had been bitten might look at it and live. The serpent was a a mark of God's anger and God's mercy. God's people might be saved by the God of life if only they would look upon the image of that which would have brought about their death. To see the Son of Man lifted up calls for belief for the sake of eternal life, not simply a restoration to earthly life. God once saved the people by calling upon them to gaze on the serpent. Now God would save the people by having them gaze in belief upon the Son, lifted up on a cross also a symbol of our death and salvation. Next comes John 3.16, in which the so is so often misunderstood. The Greek hautas means so, in the sense of just so, or in this way, or actually the more archaic thusly. We could translate the verse as This is the way God loved the world, with the result that he gave his only son in order that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 is not about how much God loved the world. It is about what way God loved the world. The single most important thing to notice about this verse is that God loved the world. God deeply loved the world that God created. And God longs for this creation to live. It is not only God's own people whom God will save, as in the Numbers story. It is the cosmos that God has loved precisely by having given his only son. The purpose of God's having sent the son 
was to save the world. Just as the purpose of commanding Moses to erect a serpent on a pole was to save the people from death. The son came to save, to grant eternal life because God loved the world. That was Jesus' announcement. I'm here because the God who loved you of old still does. He sent me to tell you, to show you, to gather you up into life with him forever. Jesus' coming is like the bringing of a light into a dark space. The contrast of light and dark is intense. You find it not only in scripture, but throughout literature, movies, art, etc. Light is life. Light is good. Light is knowledge. Light is salvation. Darkness is always the opposite. Indeed, the coming of the sun into the world leads to a number of opposite realities. Condemn and save. Believe and not believe. Stay in the darkness and come into the light. Do evil and do what is true. These opposites express, express the sharp distinction that is created when our dark, dark cosmos is entered by the light of God. Like the people in the story, in Numbers, we have already been bitten or are in imminent danger of being bitten. Death is inevitable. When the bronze serpent is brought into the world, we look and live, or we do not. As Jesus comes into the world, we trust that which bears God's gracious love, or we do not. We receive eternal life, or we continue to live apart from God, condemned. All this demands our deciding to believe or not. We have several reminders in this gospel that help us to hear more deeply what John wants to say. These verses we hear today are embedded in a story where Jesus continues to engage, argue, and persuade people who are slowly transformed into believers. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus is the seeker by night in darkness who is left in confusion only to reappear later in chapter 19 verse 39 to help care for Jesus' body. He has emerged from darkness into light over the course of Jesus' ministry. So also, we find later, the Samaritan woman of John chapter 4 whose long conversation with Jesus ends in a tentative belief, far from where she first began. Consider the blind man being healed in chapter 9, whose move from darkness to light happens rather quickly in physiological terms, but more slowly in terms of identifying Jesus. The intense contrast between believing and not believing, darkness and light, and evil and truth. Human beings come to recognize truth, light, life, and God's own Son. Finally, verse 18 through 21 today follow the first and most important contrast. The contrasting ways to depict God's own goal and longing. God's way of loving the world was to send the Son to save it. Jesus is God's expression of love and longing. The light comes to find us, to illuminate our path for our sake, because God wants us. God reaches out through the Son with the sheer purpose of sharing everlasting life with all of us. As we venture into the second half of our Lenten journey, let us meditate on the contrasting views in our life 
And let us meditate on what divides us and keeps us away from choosing Christ fully. John tells us there are real consequences in our daily life and our everlasting relationship with God. But he tells us, in order to help us see the contrasts, look clearly at our lives, appreciate the gracious gift of God as a gift of love, and live in fearless confidence of that love. Have we ever been so truly and consistently desired by another as we are by God? No. Indeed. God loved the world in this way that he gave the Son so that we might live forever with God. Amen. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and to look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and a life to the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> the cross of Jesus reminds us not only of our sinfulness, but also of God's infinite love and mercy. With full confidence, we acknowledge our weakness as we say. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. May the church remain a living sign of God's love and mercy in times of darkness and despair, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May our government leaders strive to live by God's truth and walk in the light of Jesus, forsaking the culture of death and corruption. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May we become more aware that sin not only offends God, but wounds us and those around us. May we have frequent recourse through the sacrament of penance that reconciles us to God and to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who serve in our military and for their families, may they know God's guidance and protection and our prayerful gratitude for their many sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Guide and give strength to health care workers, first responders, and all those who serve us during these challenging times. Grant them wisdom and perseverance to continue their good works on our behalf. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our brothers and sisters at home who are one with us celebrating this liturgy for the sick and for the homebound. For our faithful departed, especially for Geraldine Claus, 
infant Roberto Carlos Lopez and Anne Colleen Schwab for the intentions we hold in our hearts and for the special intentions in our book of prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Benjamin Los Baines, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, make us witness to the spirit of the cross by becoming beacons of peace and hope for our brothers and sisters. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, may the brethren may sacrifice in yours and made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name. But of all this church. Praise before you with joy this offering. Bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you, as it is fitting for the salvation of the world. To Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walk in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought this born in slavery to the ancient sin, to the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed the Leo Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and promise your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and bury our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him of them in him, O God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To the rest, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. Lord, save us. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Knights of Columbus Walter Pollard Council 5480 will be hosting a drive through Founders Day fish fry at the Columbian Center on March 26th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Please refer to the parish newsletter for a sign-up link. This fish fry is in honor of Blessed Father Michael J. McGivney founder of the Knights of Columbus. Pope Francis has declared this the year of St. Joseph. Following his feast day on March 19th, families are invited to take home a statue of St. Joseph and spend a week in reflection and prayer. Again, please refer to the parish website, newsletter, and Facebook for details and sign up. St. Jerome Mission Trip Easter Eggs are on sale now. Orders must be received and paid for by March 21st. Please refer to the parish newsletter for details or call the parish office. 
and also refer to the parish newsletter for the upcoming, upcoming schedule of Lenten services. Thank you. Before we end our Mass, I would like to thank you, our dear parishioners, your continued support to our parish, for sending your contribution to us via mail, and you're sending it through your envelopes, and also through our e-giving. And as been announced, today is the year of St. Joseph. The solemnity of the celebration will be on March 19th. Um, though this is not a holiday of obligation, but in our observance of the declaration of our Holy Father that this year is the year of St. Joseph, we are going to have our Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on March 19th. That is a Friday, so our regular Mass, our daily Mass at 8 o'clock in the morning. And you will be given the chance also to bring in your families the image of St. Joseph. So please sign up and have St. Joseph in your family for a week. If you don't sign up, I will be the one to knock on your door. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good, to Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. What wondrous love is this, O oh, my soul, O oh, my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh, my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul?